Stage 1 represents the very beginning of the Warlock Man's adventure. They probably picked Warlock because they felt drawn to this ball of space magic and loved the description of weaponizing the mysteries of the universe. However, the beginning of the Warlock journey is really difficult, and the truth is, most Stage 1 Warlocks often feel helpless and confused. They're especially frustrated by their jump ability, and at least for now, they think their jump is absolute trash. No way, I can't even make it up there? Oh my, this thing sucks, dude. It's unbelievably slow, man. What? Why, why can't my glide go upward? <sighs> Following these difficult experiences, the Warlock main begins to wonder which glide option they should actually be using, and they might even test out Blink. No, I, I am not using this. It is even worse than Glide. As they toss their first grenades and cast their first supers, they get a small glimpse of what being a warlock is all about. Exploding stuff with space magic. They absolutely love their supers and the warlock power fantasy, and they're constantly craving the rush that they get from clearing out huge groups of enemies with their super. But somehow, they feel kind of disappointed. Since they don't have any builds or gear, their abilities take forever to recharge, and they don't feel like an awesome space wizard just yet. They have absolutely no idea how to optimize their class, and they start to wonder if maybe picking Warlock was a mistake. This might turn some people away, but most Warlocks in this stage develop a burning desire to learn more about their class and unlock their full potential. Stage 2 begins after the Warlock has stumbled their way through their first few hours of gameplay. At this point, they've learned the most basic things about the Warlock, but in the process, they've also learned some things the hard way. How did I die? I thought my rift was supposed to heal me? Did I seriously just hit myself with my own Nova Bomb? Guys, don't worry, I have a healing rift. At this point, the Warlock main learns the basics of the different subclasses, and they analyze a bit more of what the Warlock class has to offer. Since they're trying everything out and severely lack experience with any one thing, they're still pretty bad at playing Warlock and just Destiny 2 as a whole. Bro, check out this new exotic I just got. Uh oh, let me check it out, man. Take a look. Oh, my brother in light. This only works with Void, my guy. Around this time, the Warlock main learns how to glide while not dying every single time, but they still fail often and have a long way to go if they want to truly master their movement. Stage 2 Warlocks don't have any good builds whatsoever, but they have started to get some half-decent armor that increases their stats and lets them use their space magic a bit more often. They love this because they feel like they were born to dominate their foes with explosions and abilities. But with that said, they still feel that their abilities are weak because their loadout is awful, and this leads them to a dilemma in the next stage. But before we get to that, I want to tell you guys about a game that also has spellcasting characters that look a lot like Destiny Warlocks. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, and today I'm ranking my top 3 champions that resemble Warlocks. Coming in at number 3 we have Kale, he's definitely got some Warlock characteristics to him, and I love his disintegrate ability. At number 2 we have Gameron with his absolutely massive robes, and finally at number 1 we have Rhodos. I love his floating animation, and it looks so similar to the Warlock character screen. Raid has a special offer right now to get Ronda Rousey's champion by simply logging in for 7 days before February 20th. Scan the QR code on screen or use the description link and new players will get bonuses worth $30 including the Chinaro champion, 200k silver, and an energy refill, XP boost, and epic skill tome. The rewards will be right here and thanks again to Raid for sponsoring today's video. After about 10 to 20 hours of playtime, the Warlock main is faced with a pretty big problem. They know that in order to grow more powerful, they need to start making some builds, but they feel overwhelmed because they don't really know what stuff works well together. Add on top of that, they probably don't have many exotics unlocked, they don't have any idea what a Jolt or a Scorch is, and they don't have their subclasses upgraded and fully unlocked. There are literally millions of different possible combinations of aspects, fragments, exotics, weapons, perks, and the process of unlocking everything and then creating a build is really daunting. Titan exotics tend to be pretty simple and just involve punching, but Warlock exotics are normally a bit more complicated and confusing. Despite their difficulties in this stage, the Warlock main is optimistic about their future because they just know they can be really powerful if they get a good setup. They've probably seen a stage 9 Warlock out in the wild just annihilating everything in their path and throwing seamlessly endless space magic at their foes. They know it's going to take a lot of work to get there, but the stage 3 Warlock main is motivated to learn more and this drives them to progress to the next stage. Stage 4 is the obsessive grinding and build crafting stage. The Warlock main has decided that they should just brute force their way to finding a good build by creating as many as they possibly can. They spend hours grinding to acquire more exotics, and they become addicted to learning about all the unique perks and abilities that Warlocks and their exotics have to offer. 
Regardless of what build they choose though, one thing is starting to become clear. A lot of Warlock things focus on grenades. Whether you're throwing them, eating them, turning them into a stasis turret, charging them up, or using them to fly a mile up in the sky, grenades are a key part of the magical Warlock identity. The Warlock main cranks their discipline stat up to the max and starts searching for perks like Demolitionist that synergize with grenades. Even though the builds they create in this stage are pretty basic and probably not too powerful, the Warlock main is finally feeling like they are becoming the space wizard they were meant to be. They have some decent synergy between their grenades, subclass perks, weapons, and exotics, and they're starting to notice that they can breeze through activities that they used to find challenging. They might even dabble in some more difficult content like their first raid or nightfall, and find some amount of success. Also around this time, they start to show some of the defining features of a warlock man. Well, I placed my rift, I gotta stand here until it expires. If I'm in the air, they won't be able to see me coming. Look, it's a fellow Warlock man. I must give him a proper greeting. After a while though, the Warlock man takes a look in the mirror and realizes that they look really dumb wearing an ugly dress and a helmet that doesn't really fit in. It's time to do something about that. A Warlock enters stage 5 when they decide that they need to spend more time improving their fashion instead of only focusing on improving their gameplay and character. As soon as the Warlock man enters this stage though, they have a bit of a panic attack because of one huge problem. The Warlock robe dictates like 80% of the character's fashion game. The robes make or break the appearance of the Warlock, and this is especially problematic if the Warlock is using an exotic chess piece because it can't be transmogged and some of them don't look so great. After spending a while on the transmog screen though, the Warlock main comes to the conclusion that they have two choices, the trench coat look or the bathrobe look. They also notice that their boots are almost meaningless because they're often completely hidden by their robes. During the fashion stage, there are a few helmets that Warlocks really like. This one, this one, and of course, this one. Especially this one. Warlock mains love this one so much, I bet they would equip it in every single slot if they could. Warlocks in the fashion stage might also get a little jealous of the Hunter and Titan class items. Hunters get amazing capes, Titans get a huge variety of cool marks, and poor Warlocks are just left with a pathetic arm bracelet that you can barely even see. They think it's so unfair. However, by the end of the stage, the Warlock finds a cool bond, and they are very proud of their fashion. They might have spent hundreds of dollars on Eververse, but they now have something that is really cool and also somewhat unique. They're glad that they don't fit into a stereotype like the Hunter who wears all black, or the Titan that looks like a kid drew all over him with crayons. At the end of the stage, the Warlock main is still a pretty average player, but at least now they're playing in style. Stage 6 is when the Warlock main really starts to hone their craft and study the art of being a Warlock. As their playtime surpasses 100 hours, they do a deep dive into the details of Destiny build crafting, and they actually begin to learn how to create some genuinely powerful builds. By this point, they've acquired some decent weapons and armor, and for the first time, they're now able to put together some character stats that actually make sense. Also, don't ask me why it takes so long, but stage 6 is when the Warlock finally gets a good understanding of how to use their glide. At long last, they've learned how to use momentum to their advantage to float over long distances, and they also learned how to move fast with Warlock Serving by activating the Burst Glide while headed downward. They also have stopped using the rifts out in the open after taking damage, and they've learned how to place them more intentionally and preemptively. Stage 6 Warlocks are good enough to regularly do endgame activities, but this presents an annoying new problem. They prepare an amazing build and they want to try it out, but as soon as they join the voice chat, this happens. Hey Warlock, uh, can you switch to Well of Radiance? <sighs> yeah, I guess. Oh, and Divinity please? Experiences like this lead many Warlocks to live by the phrase, born to Nova, forced to Well. At first, they really hate using their Well of Radiance build, but unfortunately they spend a lot of time using it, especially in PvE. As a result, Warlocks in this stage might also try out the other two classes, but they rarely decide to stop being a Warlock min. Punching stuff as a Titan or hopping around as a Hunter is fun for a change, but it just doesn't feel the same as the graceful floating Warlock that they've grown to love. Stage 7 is the medic phase. The Warlock embraces the stereotype of the fireteam healer, and they go into full support mode. In the past, they were much more focused on just blowing stuff up, but now in Stage 7, they believe they have a much more mature approach to playing the game. We're talking Well of Radiance, Lumina or Divinity, healing grenades, tons of rifts, boots of the assembler, Luna faction boots, and potentially anything else that improves the rift like the stag. Being a support player is just fun, and it makes the Warlock main feel really important. They feel like a legend as they slam their sword into the ground and watch their entire team gather around them. They think, if it weren't for me, this whole raid team would have just died, but I healed them and then we beat the boss. 
In PvP, they have hero moments like placing a Well of Radiance on a zone and then winning the entire game for their team. Stuff like this might even result in them receiving an occasional compliment from a fire team member. This might seem like a little thing, but it absolutely makes their day. Stage 7.5 is an optional in-between stage that is only completed by some Warlock mains. During this stage, the Warlock equips blink for the first time since stage 1, and after a few minutes of using it, they realize it can actually be good? They always thought that Blink was a pretty cool ability, but since they had such a bad experience with it during Stage 1, they always just assumed it was not a viable option. But now, they absolutely love it. It does take them some practice to get their momentum going and actually cover long distances with the Blink, but the Stage 7.5 Warlock is up to the challenge. They lean into the teleporting movement style and even increase the Blink's effectiveness with the Astrocyte Verse exotic. Meanwhile, everyone else just thinks that Stage 7.5 Warlocks have gone crazy, but they do not care. They're so obsessed that they'll constantly use Blink in PvE, and the craziest Blink enthusiasts will even attempt using it on jumping puzzles. Some players never actually leave this stage, but eventually most Warlocks will stop and move on to Stage 8. A Stage 8 Warlock main is one of the most insane things that you will ever see in Destiny 2. They've played the game for hundreds or potentially thousands of hours, and their entire personality now centers around moving fast. They believe that movement is the skill gap and nobody can convince them otherwise. They've mastered the art of spamming Icarus Dash every 5 seconds, they can probably well skate to travel around at the speed of light, and they love using Heat Rises to glide around like a majestic flaming butterfly. They've completely changed their opinion from back in Stage 1 when they thought that Glide was by far the worst movement ability in the game. They now know that the Warlock Movement Kit is extremely powerful and arguably the best in the entire game, but only if you know what you're doing. They do things like use slopes to propel themselves extremely fast with their Glide, and they now exclusively cast their Rift while moving. In fact, their movement is so graceful that even the Agile Hunters look clumsy by comparison. Even though the Warlock Man has grown extremely powerful, they still gracefully float to their deaths every now and then. They've achieved a high level of mastery with their builds, and they're finally capable of throwing near-constant grenades and space magic in PvE. This newfound wizardry also leads some Stage 8 Warlocks to get a bit egotistical and think they are far better than everyone else, and especially better than Hunters and Titans. They've grown a lot since Stage 1, but eventually they have a shift in their mindset and realize that there is always more room to improve. By Stage 9, the Warlock has played for thousands of hours, and they've become a true master of the class. Instead of viewing enemies as obstacles to overcome, they now view them as catalysts for their abilities. Instead of just defeating enemies, they now use them to create huge explosions and to activate perks that make them more powerful. The Stage 9 Warlock is an architect who designs hundreds of amazing loadouts, and they are always telling their fire team members about the latest build they invented. They know about all of the special Warlock synergies like pairing Necrotic Grips with Thorn, Osteostriga, and Touch of Malice. Their skills have improved so much that they're now able to easily beat all of the endgame content, and when they're surrounded by a fire team of other Stage 9 Warlocks, no activity except for PvP or Day 1 raids can challenge them anymore. As a result, they might develop an addiction to soloing content and attempt to solo everything, whether it's legendary campaigns, dungeons, or Grandmaster Nightfalls. They have developed and refined their methods for the most optimal DPS you can possibly imagine, and they might also get obsessed with learning the most hidden lore details in the history of the Destiny franchise. Their friends might see them as a total nerd now, but the Warlock main doesn't let that upset them. They embrace it. They love their new identity as a Destiny expert who can conquer almost everything in the game, and they feel satisfied. For this very reason, most Warlocks will never move beyond Stage 9, but a few extraordinary players do eventually progress to the coveted final stage. Stage 10 Warlocks are completely different from all of the earlier stages. Whether they've chosen to master the Crucible, solo every PvE activity in the game, or become a lore scholar who can recite the entire Destiny story from memory, Stage 10 Warlocks are incredibly wise and powerful. They are proud of all of their Destiny knowledge, and unlike some of the earlier stages, they use this knowledge to uplift others and guide less experienced Warlock mains. Although they're proficient in many different playstyles, the Stage 10 Warlock has carved out their own unique way of playing Destiny, and regardless of what it is, they truly master their playstyle. They've accepted that they're a Warlock, powerful and intellectual. They don't want capes or bulky armor, they just want the bathrobe. Now that you've experienced the 10 stages of every Warlock main, go watch the 10 stages of every Titan main and the 10 stages of every Hunter main. These are some of my favorite videos I've ever made and I promise you'll enjoy them. 